our very first garden tour. It is April, I'm in zone three, and we're doing a garden tour, which seems a little bit crazy because what is there really to show you in zone three in April? But you know what? There's a surprising amount of stuff that goes on behind the scenes in April. This is the ideal time where we're prepping our ground, we're still doing lots of seed starting, and there's just many things going on so that when May hits and the weather looks good and it's time to plant, we can just hit the ground running. We're not wasting any time doing other tasks that we could have been doing now. So grab yourself your favorite beverage of choice and let's talk a little bit about what's going on right here in the city garden and also what's going on out at the acreage garden. If you're new to this channel, again, my name is Kristen. I am the gardener and the content creator behind Shifting Roots, and I help gardeners in cold climates with short growing seasons learn to grow flowers and vegetables with ease. So if you're in a similar climate too, you'll definitely want to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you'd like to see what I'm doing on the daily, I show up on Instagram and Facebook every single day in real time and show you what needs to be done right this minute. Okay, so let's start with the seed start. We're at approximately week four in zone three and so most of my seed starting has been done and this is the week where I'll do the last little bit of it. So basically there is no more room in our seed starting setup. This year we have everything in the basement because we have a baby and a toddler who just get into everything. Thankfully our older kid doesn't but um, if we had it on the main floor we'd have a lot of destroyed plants right about now. Because I don't have a lot of room, I've actually been hardening off some of my stuff earlier. And so anything that is a little bit more cold tolerant, so my cabbages, my broccoli, snapdragons, um, I'm finding status is good, lisianthus, anything like that that can kind of tolerate the cold um, gets booted outside during the day. And then I'm doing a hardening off process where I have some frost cloth over top of it to help block out both the wind and the sun. And it's just a very gentle, nice hardening off process. I still keep everything in the containers so that if it gets to freezing temperatures overnight, I can still take it back indoors. And of course, when I'm bringing stuff out, I don't just like set it out and forget about it and leave it out. I'm always checking the weather. I'm always making sure that my plant babies are doing okay and they're not getting too stressed, making sure to water them too. As you can see with the wind, um, it's really windy in April and honestly anytime it's pretty windy where I live. So that means that my plants dry out pretty quick. So I do need to make sure every day that they are getting enough water, which speaking of water, our system for collecting water off of our roof has been working out really fantastic. There were just a few little hurdles at the beginning of the season because we didn't really realize that our overflow system wouldn't work so well and that melting snow would be so much water. So once we got that sorted, I saved some of the overflow and basically I haven't had to turn on my outdoor tap at all once and I am watering if not every day, every second day, the stuff that I have started early. This might surprise you, but I actually have some stuff that's already out in the ground and I don't cover anymore because it is both frost tolerant and completely hardened off already. So I have some snapdragon, some anemones, I have a little bit of ranunculus, and I also have some stock. And I know for those of you who have been guarding it for a long time in zone three like I am, that probably seems like crazy talk but they've been doing well. And once they've been fully hardened off and I've taken off those covers, they've been really happy. And the one night it got down to about minus 12 degrees Celsius. And with their frost covers, they were actually okay. Now lately I've been leaving those frost covers off and it's been around minus two, minus three degrees Celsius. And it is still totally fine, which I'm super thankful for. I've also been doing a little bit of growing in the cold frame and in my winter sewing containers. None of those are really have much of anything in them yet. I also find that in the cold frame of the winter sewing containers, I have to be a lot more diligent about the watering. They just seem to dry out faster. So we'll see how that does in a couple of weeks. The nice thing about those two is they won't grow if it's not warm enough. So you don't have to worry that you're like not doing it right because if it doesn't grow, it's just not warm enough or it doesn't have enough moisture. And that's it, you didn't do anything wrong. But for the most part around here at the city, it's it's just a lot of cleaning up to do, right? I've started a little bit of bed prep as 
I'm able to really I think in the next two weeks is when most of the stuff around here will get done right now our priority is actually out at the acreage the soil condition was so bad last year that we just really needed to prioritize bringing lots and lots of compost out to the acreage so basically every day that either myself or my husband Michael are able to get out to the acreage and load up with compost we do so we've done already four loads and two loads of wood chips and we have lots more we're hoping to do another two or three this week another two or three the next week and get as much done as we can so speaking of the acreage let's head over there and here we are we're back at the acreage so I'll take you on a little tour of all the things that we've done already and interspersed with this the hermit took some footage for me of him um, putting down the tarp and also collecting all of the compost and the and the wood chips so it'll be a little bit of me and a little bit of him a little bit of right now and a little bit of two weeks ago so let's take a look at what's all going on not the nicest of days to begin gardening but you gotta start when it's time That's the first truckload of many for this season. First load of compost finished. Might as well give you a bit of a state of the garden. You can see the late snow has come in and covered everything. That's all right, a little bit of moisture never hurts. Got some raised beds. I built these for my mother last year. Much easier for her to get up and tend to this garden rather than something in the ground. Over here is where my garden beds will be. Some might recognize it from last year. The plan now is to build that compost over there. And once this snow melts off, cover it with a tarp, kill off all the weeds, and then build beds. Cardboard, compost, amended, and grow. Doesn't look like much right now. Now this is going to produce a lot of food. Beds going here. I think I have 14 beds, 30 inch by 40 feet laid out. Some raised beds here, right in front. We have some berry bushes. Beginnings of a compost pile. I'll build a better one, probably over where I can drop it off from the truck over there. Shed. Now this area is behind the garden. We have probably three quarters of an acre of meadow, which just gets mowed down every year, nothing else. I'd like to have some chickens there. I probably don't need to tell you what the wood chips are for. Everyone knows in the no-till gardening system, this is used as a mulch for weed suppression, moisture retention, all sorts of things. Now we're lucky enough here that our municipality, our city, actually provides this for free. You just have to pick it up yourself. They also provide all the compost, of which that's just a little bit of what we need. We need a lot more. All that's going to go here on the garden. Wood chips in the pathways, mulch or compost on the, the beds. Here I've got to put down a lot of wood chips and have a nice wide path at each end on this side of the beds and on that side of the beds. Here we have our raspberry patch which has many young trees growing up through it which will have to come down, open up 
light for the garden. This was last year's squash and corn patch. Not exactly sure where, but this somewhere around here, or maybe just on the other side is where I'm thinking of putting the greenhouse this year. We'll be building a hoop house style with top rail from chain link fence. It should be very exciting. And here's the tarp that we rolled out. This is our hope to kill the weeds. Um, we're gonna be leaving this on for three weeks. We're already about one week into it. And then we'll take it off and hopefully we won't have as many weeds to deal with. So behind me here's the one thing that I have planted in the ground yet. It's not safe to plant most stuff, but these Brussels sprouts can definitely take it. And I was running out of space, so I decided to plant them. Let's go take a look at what I've done. It doesn't look like much, but I promise that it'll look like something hopefully in the next tour. So these Brussels sprouts have some trees to provide sort of an arch like over here because this is still a little bit too big yet and these trees are just a nice low support for the frost cloth and I keep these covered with frost cloth all the time because the wind pressure out here is pretty bad and um, this keeps them happy and then once a week I give them some fish emulsion and they've been out in minus 13 with the frost cloth so they're looking a little sad but um, I think they're gonna pull through and it is going to be okay. And now I've got them all wrapped up snug. They're just held in with some landscape staples and I have them pretty close together because again, the wind we found last year would rip them out quite easily. Here, I'll just put that one in. And this has held up really well and we've had some pretty intense spring winds so far. So that's basically the gist of what's going on at the acreage garden. It maybe doesn't look like much, but hopefully in another month, another two, three weeks, it's going to look a lot different and a lot more exciting. And I can't wait to show it to you. So my plan with these garden tours is to do them I would say every two weeks or so. Now, once the season ramps up, I'll probably do them weekly. But for now in zone three, I feel like there's just not gonna be enough that's exciting from week to week to really show you about it. So you get them when you get them. <laughs> 
All right, so that's everything for today. If you also live in a cold climate with a short growing season like I do, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And also I show up every single day on Instagram and Facebook so you can see exactly what I'm doing in real time and also know what to do in your garden as well. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. 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 Oh, good job. <laughs>